Hey guys, Common Man 91 here with you again, and today we got the Smith & Wesson Model 19 chambered in 357 Magnum, the oldest Magnum cartridge around. The Magnum cartridge for the 357, one of the founding fathers that you're going to be hearing about quite often is Elmer Keith, especially the more you delve into the 357. Elmer Keith was definitely one of the founding fathers. He uh, tinkered around with making the 38 Special a little bit hotter, which kind of helped lay the foundation for the 357 Magnum. And then also whenever you start studying up on the Model 19, you're going to hear the name Bill Jordan, who is a very famous peace officer, has written one book I know for sure. He might have more out there. He was a Marine Corps officer in the Korean War, which is a, a very, very good shot. You might be able to find some YouTube videos of his trick shooting. He was very famous for shooting from the hip, a very large man. But this particular gun, it being the Model 19, is a K-frame, which is smaller than most 357 Magnums at the time, which were in frames for the Smith & Wesson. Bill Jordan wanted a smaller, lighter gun for peace officers, highway patrol, such as that, that could handle a 357 Magnum load. And this is pretty much the child of his thinking along with others. It has a beautiful blue finish on it. You can see that it is unloaded. You have your ejector rod. The trigger pulls on these are really nice how they come, but a trigger job is highly recommended on it. Um, it is an older gun, you're going to have to remember that. And it is a double action, single action revolver, which is probably the way you want it if you're carrying this pistol. You don't want to just have a really light trigger pull all the way. Let's see if I can demonstrate it for you to some extent. You'll see the double action brings the hammer back and drops the hammer. And with the single action, the way I have this particular one set up is very, very light. It's just a real clean break. And on this older model, you're going to notice that it has the external uh, firing pin on it, which Smith & Wesson later did away with. You also have recesses for your bullets. which Smith & Wesson also later did away with. Uh, it's probably just cheaper to produce it like that. Um, I don't see an advantage one over the other. I just prefer the older pistols where it, they just fit in there flush. I, I think that's really nice. Uh, this also has a serrated trigger on it, which was requested by Bill Jordan. It, it just kind of helps you get a nicer grip on there compared to a smoother one that you'd probably get on a Model 22 or something along the lines of that. And here is your 357 Magnum bullet. It is larger than the very popular 9mm bullet, which you'll see in a few revolvers, mostly semi-auto pistols. Uh, the only semi-auto pistol you'll probably see the 357 Magnum in is going to be a Desert Eagle. They did experiment with the 357 SIG to kind of produce the same ballistics, but still not as popular as the 357 Magnum. Your use for this would be, a, if you're in an open carry state, you could definitely open carry this gun. Uh, for woods walking, would be a very popular use for this gun. Uh, I would not recommend it for hunting. It's more of a man stopper, I would say. A very good self-defense round. This is just a jacketed soft point. Uh, the reason I wouldn't recommend it for hunting, especially if you're in more of the northern states, especially British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, you're going to have more something along the lines of bears, and for that I would recommend the 44 Magnum, which as you can see, they're the same length, but the 44 Magnum is going to be considerably bigger. Now the width of this bullet is almost identical to your 9mm, which is also almost identical to your 38 Special, which was kind of the, I guess you could say the father to this round. The only difference in looking at those rounds is your 357 Magnum casing is going to be a little bit larger. This is because 
they didn't, it wasn't for the powder. They wanted it so you couldn't put a 357 Magnum in one of the old 38 Special revolvers that were not built to handle the pressure of that 357 Magnum round. It would just would be a bad day for everyone. The particular ballistics on this round, which is a PMC brass jacketed soft point, is 505 foot-pounds muzzle, in, excuse me, 505 muzzle energy per foot-pound. And then your speed is going to be 1,200 feet per second. That's a really fast round. <laughs> and then you can... If you definitely get a hotter round, I know Hornady makes quite a bit, Buffalo Boar does, um, you can get them up to about 600 foot-pounds of energy. They get really, really high up there. Um, the Model 19 is an upgrade from the Model 10, which was a 38 Special, and they've just kind of built on it and built on it. That's where you're going to see the tacks, the 19 Tac 1, 19 Tac 2, 19 Tac 3. It carries on. Up to 1999, I can't remember the exact same tack that it ends on. They're all particular upgrades or changes they've made to the revolver, not always an upgrade. But you can normally find this gun used, you're probably not going to find it, no, for around 500 to even up to $800, depending on the condition, if it's a special edition, anything along the lines of that. And this has the factory target grips on it. There's a wide variety of grips. You have the Packmire, which is really popular whenever this pistol first came out. The, these are, I think they might be called the Decelerator. Really good for recoil. It's going to be a little bit shorter than your regular stock target grips. And then you have the Hogue, which are going to be the same length. Really good for recoil. And both of these are very easy to install. This is a square butt revolver, so remember that if you do get it and you order grips, it is a square butt and not a round. And that's about all I have. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer in the comments. Thank you.